Hello, thank you so much for watching. This is my first video uh, for the Invisible Threads project and I'm gonna show you all the different hardware components that make up the beacons and show you them in action. So this is what all the hardware looks like uh, as it's currently assembled and goes into the beacon. I'm just gonna plug in the batteries for each of the beacons and then while they're starting up, I'll walk through the different bits and pieces. Okay. So you can see here, we've got a LiPo battery, which powers the beacons, and that plugs into the particle electron. And it's blinking green right now because it's trying to connect to the cellular network that the beacons communicate over. And then it begins to breathe cyan once it's happily connected, as it's doing now. Um, and this also means we should shortly be getting some lights on, probably within the next 30 seconds or a minute. Here are the NeoPixel lights. I'm currently using a NeoPixel ring and a block of four. In future iterations, I'm going to try and use less lights to conserve some energy. Ideally, in the design, I'd like to try and get away with only using eight NeoPixels. Here's the GPS. The GPS is connected to a larger antenna. The particle electron is also connected to an antenna for the cellular network that you can see here. You can see here that a beacon has come on and it's red, so that means that there's no other beacons in proximity, which makes sense because right now we aren't seeing any information from Janet. So uh, this is Brett, we can see here getting information uh, in the console that from Brett and not from Janet. Up until now, this project has really focused on figuring out the hardware, programming, and design of the beacons. I've created several versions of them, and in subsequent videos, I'm going to be speaking more about my process in detail, specifically with an upgrade to the third beacon in this family, Alice. One of the things that I'm going to be looking at in the next iteration is making the components more compact and more stable so I don't have any connectivity issues, especially as we start to move them around and take them out in public space a bit more. This includes changing from a particle electron to a particle boron using more compact GPS and uh, less lights so that I can use a smaller battery. I'm also going to add wireless charging and design some sort of mount or 3D printed holder to keep things secure and make it easier to put in and take out the hardware from the beacons. So generally what's happening is that the beacons are sending their GPS coordinates and receiving RGB, red, green, and blue, and intensity values based on their proximity to each other. You can see in the console here that we're receiving a stream of information coming from Brett. This includes the event which is getting uh, the location and that is returning GPS coordinates, the time, and the beacon ID. But directly below that is the name of the beacon, Janet, Brett's proximity, and an indication of what the light color should be, in this instance, red. Um, and we will start to see data in this console from Janet as soon as it's available. Brett and Janet are programmed to respond to each other based on their proximity and show a different color and light intensity based on how close they are to each other. When they are beyond 100 meters or approximately 330 feet, they both glow uh, low intensity red. But as they become closer to each other, they cycle through colors purple, pink, gold, and white. The color, intensity, and distances can all be easily adjusted, and I'm interested in testing the different responses, for instance, individually, beacon to beacon, or as a family or a swarm. And there we go. So as soon as Janet came on, Janet recognized um, Brett right away. And you can see there that Janet and Brett are recognizing uh, each other and that they're both really close to each other. So um, this is the beacon shell. So I'm not sure if you can see this. Um, the shell is made of cedar and it's um, 
made of resin as well. So each of the cedar pieces has been coated with resin. Um, and then the little panel or hatch to get in is just held on with a couple of magnets. So when all these components are on the inside here, it glows. The next steps, I'm going to be putting them together and uh, taking them out for a walk. So next time you'll see them, they'll be in their shells.